So, you bought yourself a brand new shiny Switch, opened it up, and then discovered Joy-Cons are really, really tiny. And that words you out a little bit. It's a controller for ants. What is this? A center for ants! But you do know that Nintendo is making a Pro Controller for 70 bucks. So the question is, is it worth running out and buying one of these? Well, let's take a look at all the different ways you can play Switch games and which way is the best. To begin with, let's cover all the different ways you can use Joy-Cons. There's basically three main methods aside from using them in handheld mode. You can use a pair of Joy-Cons, one in each hand freely. You can put them together to have in a grip like this, or for really simple games or local multiplayer situations, you can use a single Joy-Con sideways. Now, like I said back in my review, I really personally like using one in each hand. It's not that it's the most precise controls or the highest performance, but just how comfortable it really is. I mean, if you ever used a Wii back in the day, imagine having two Wiimotes, one in each hand, that were smaller, more comfortable, and most importantly, didn't have a cable running between them. You never realize how annoying it is to actually have both hands together all the time while gaming. With this, you can just kind of leave them at your side and play really relaxed. It's also good to note that if they are so small that it actually bothers you because you have larger hands, Nintendo does sell grip attachments that will go over them to make them larger. Now the other option straight out of the box is you can slide two controllers into the grip, which personally I really, really don't like. It's supposed to be closer to using a traditional controller, which is accurate, but you're basically getting the worst aspects of the Joy-Cons with none of the benefits, and it's just this weird freakish monster that doesn't feel good at all. The grips are very tiny, they're not gripped very well for the hand, and you realize how stiffly positioned all the buttons are. And it's here that you also notice some of the problems. For instance, a lot of these buttons are very close together. I find myself in some games where, for instance, let's say I have to hit B to jump and Y to attack, I'll accidentally brush A or X, which is a really big problem in some games. Now, the last method is, of course, using a single Joy-Con sideways. Now, a really interesting thing about this that not a lot of people notice is that the left and right Joy-Con don't have the same spacing. The stick is further to the left or right depending on which one you use. So it's kind of designed so that you can figure out which one feels a little more comfortable for your particular hands. For me, I like the right one. Now, with that in mind, there is something I bought on a whim just to try it out, and I am so glad I did. There's this little third-party accessory that acts as a handle for each Joy-Con, and it's really easy to use. It's just this little fold here. You place it inside. They are shaped specifically for the left and right, and it latches in. All the buttons, including the shoulder ones, work really well with it. It makes it actually feel like a little controller. It's still not going to beat out using some of the other control methods, but in a local multiplayer situation, these things are amazing for how much you pay. So the Joy-Con is really versatile, but how do all of these options stack up against using an actual traditional controller like the Pro one? Well, honestly, this is better. The Switch Pro Controller is an evolution of what Nintendo tried doing with the Wii U Pro Controller. That was basically just an Xbox 360 controller, but they decided to try and be different and switch the buttons with the sticks that honestly didn't actually feel that great. With the Switch Pro Controller, you'll see that they're using the exact same setup, but overall, it just feels a lot better. Now, there is an exception to this, and that's the fact that when it comes to really intensive gaming, I prefer this, for sure. But if I'm doing anything that's much slower in pace, if it's a turn-based game or it's just a very easy game that I don't have to be super focused on, I actually do end up using the Joy-Cons instead because it's just so easy to lay back and relax when using them. If I'm not really in a dedicated gaming mode, these are just more fun to use. So should you rush out and buy a Pro Controller right away? Not really. It's cool, it's worth having, and worth upgrading to eventually, but it's not the kind of thing that's an absolute necessity. The Joy-Cons are comfortable, and they get the job done. Also, come on, prettier colors.